So why use an agent now? There's a lot of let-only landlords in this room. And this is why I think you're either very good at what you do or you're just damn crazy. And that isn't meant offensively. There's now 150 pieces of legislation that you guys as landlords and we as agents have to adhere to. That's a huge amount of legislation. And unless you know every act that I'm talking about, everything that you need to know about Housing Act and tenancy law, should you really be managing those tenancies yourself? The thing that frightens me most is most let only landlords do a really good job because they offer good quality accommodation and they find good tenants. These are not the people that are going to be struggling. You just need one tenant, one bad thing to happen to put you in a position where you might not quite know how to handle the situation. Renter is, 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 is a good example. We've been speaking to a lot of let-only landlords, seeing if they're okay, seeing if there's anything we can do, seeing if now, due to all of this legislation, do they need us to help them with the management of them. Out of about 15 calls, four of them had not registered the deposit within the required 30 days. They now can't serve notice. The tenant could also pursue them for three times the deposit plus the deposit. There's just so many things that you need to consider when letting your property and so many things that you now need to do. I just think it's so scary. The Deregulation Act requirements just on their own, how to rent guide. Who knows in here that the, when the last how to rent guide was updated? Does anybody in here know? Any landlord know when the last how to rent guide was updated? Yeah, it was done in June this year. Well done. One landlord out of all of you. So. Every time you renew that tenancy, every time you start a new tenancy, you must be giving them the correct how to rent guide. When we first started this, it was just, you've just got to give them the how to rent guide because there was only one. But the government are updating this regularly. Every time there's a change, they'll update the how to rent guide, but they won't tell you. They won't send all of you let only landlords an email and say, just to let you know, we've updated it. And they don't send us letting agents emails, neither saying just to let you know, we've updated it. So there's a couple of procedures we've put in place to ensure that when renewing tenancies, we don't use ones that are stored in a drawer that we printed. And it was funny because one of the agents said, thanks for letting us know. We've just printed 180 of them off for our student lets and now we're going to have to print 180 more. It's important you're serving the correct how to rent guide and keeping up to date with that changing. The smoke alarm checks, the inventory, the deposit registration, the identity checks, the professional contracts, the renewal and serving of notices. You need to know all of this in order to be a let only landlord. And these are the reasons why we think letting agents now are needed more than ever. Oh, sorry, I haven't finished. Immigration Act. Follow-up checks. This one, again, is really interesting. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because we've covered it at seminars. But the Immigration Act requires you to verify the right to rent of every occupier in your property, not tenant, occupier. How can you do that? One of the landlords emailed me back today and he said, that's physically impossible unless I move in with them. Of course, that is correct. It is physically impossible unless you move in with them. But you've got to have processes and procedures in place because if you are um, prosecuted under the Immigration Act, the fact that you didn't know because you didn't live with them is not going to be a defence. It just quite simply is not going, to, it's not going to cut it. And you have to remember that it's not just checking them when they first move in, it's checking them again every 12 months and checking who's in the property, checking they are who they say they are. This again is really important. Children, consider children, because somebody might move into a property with a 17-year-old. That 17-year-old doesn't have to comply with the right to rent. But in one year's time, you will. And if you've not scheduled and remembered that you need to check that, that will be another occupier in your property where you haven't verified their right to rent. Maintenance login for compliance, we talked to you about it earlier. We have, obviously, a CRM system. We quite possibly couldn't manage our... Um, our property portfolio without the need for a CRM system. But some of you landlords that have one or two properties, 
a CRM, CRM system will be completely unnecessary. So consider how you're logging the maintenance for the compliance purposes. I know that if I need to provide evidence of what we've done and how we've handled the repairs, it's all there documented on the notes, easy to see. Think about health and safety obligations for your contractors. Do you guys know that if you instruct the contractor to attend a property, that you could potentially be responsible for him while he's at your property? We make sure that every single contractor that we use is accredited to do the job that they do, that they have um, the adequate public liability insurance to protect your interest in the event of a claim. And we also take two references. Now that doesn't mean we've never had no bad contractors, because of course we do. In fact, it's probably the bane of our life, finding good contractors. But we've also got some very, very good ones. And these are things that you as landlords, when instructing your own, need to consider. Evidence. You need evidence of everything, guys. Everything that you do as a landlord, you need evidence of. Otherwise, the tenant could use it against you. Has anybody heard of GDPR? No. Nor me. GDPR drove me insane. Um, GDPR compliance came into play on the 25th of May 2018. Okay, so I'd like you to all be honest because you are all landlords in this room. Please raise your hand if you're registered with the Information Commissioner's Office. Uh oh. You're all in breach of GDPR. One landlord out of this room is registered with the ICO. As a let-only landlord, you have to be registered with the ICO because you are handling and processing tenants' data. So therefore, let-only landlords have to comply with the GDPR legislation. So if you are let-only landlords and you're not registered, you do not... Again, it's like data protection, they've never really done anything, but now they're looking to make some money out of this. And the penalties on GDPR is just phenomenal. And yes, they are going after the bigger boys, like the, you know, the Facebooks and, and those type of things. They've, they've just made the data protection regulation more current and more savvy, because back in 1988 or whenever it came out, there wasn't even Facebook or Snapchat or anything else. So, but guys, please, as a let only landlord, you have to be registered with the ICO. You are in breach if not. Can I just ask you a question? Though? You can. If you're a let only landlord, well, you, you use an agent to find your tenant. You still have to you because you process the tenant's data throughout the duration of the contract and you hold the tenant's data. Um, so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we find your tenant and then you manage it yourself. <coughs> you have to be registered. Yeah, so under a fully managed system? Under a fully managed system, no, because we handle and process all of the tenant's data, the tenant's payments and so forth. So you'd be covered under our um, data protection. Again, what did I say to you at the beginning, guys? They're just throwing it at you. They are throwing it at you guys from all angles, and they're throwing it at us from all angles. And I actually think agents and landlords should be as one, because we're all in here for the good of the lettings industry, but they are attacking us. They are attacking you guys with the ever-increasing legislation, and they are attacking us guys with the ever-increasing legislation. Because the more we as agents have to do, the more that affects our business, the more staff we have to employ, the more training we need to do. So not only does it affect you, it affects us in the same way. And we have to try and, you know, be ready for this together. Now this is, um, I'd, I'd like to say that you'd be more likely to gain possession if you'd used an agent. Because I'd also like to say that the notice would have been served correctly. We would have all the relevant documentation and everything that you need. And we've actually never had a court case go to um, court ever in the 12 years that I've worked here, maybe longer that has failed on possession proceedings. We've had a couple of adjournments and we've had a couple of delays because of these things that I've mentioned to you today, but never have we failed on obtaining possession of a property when we have served the notice, either Section 8 or 21. There's so many things, and I say this every time Tanya had one today. What did the solicitor say to you? The solicitor wanted to reserve a perfectly valid Section 21 notice. Bear in mind, Section 21 is a two months notice. The two months have passed and it has expired, and all the landlord has now said to the solicitor is, please go forward with proceedings. The solicitor has recommended serving another notice. Why? Because it was served by first class post, and you haven't got any evidence that the tenant received it. Now, in the eyes of the law, certificate of service, first class post, is absolutely adequate to move forward and gain possession of your property. 
So the reason I'm saying this to you is don't think when the shit hit the, hits the fan, excuse, excuse my French, that necessarily the solicitor might have the right information for you because it's not something unless they're landlord and tenant specialist and that, unless that's their field, it won't be something that they're working on every single day. Another change that we've, uh, just another thing to throw in there, like a solicitor said to us the other day, the Companies, ha the Companies Act 2006, um, it's really affected the way that we now sign Section 21s and Section 8s. We as your agent will sign it on your behalf. That's now been thrown into muddy water. Because what they're saying is, if you're signing it on, the, on behalf of a company, the Companies Act 2006 says it must be signed by two directors and witnesses, and it just makes it impossible to serve. So now we've even had to start getting a, those notices served by landlords. Just more changes, more changes, more changes. We've put nine months here to gain possession, and it can be longer. If done correctly, it should not exceed six months. It really shouldn't. If it exceeds six months, there's complications along the way, there's defences in court, and it's <coughs> meaning that we're having to reattend. But on average, the length of time to gain possession under Section 8 is six months, and that's just a straightforward case with no problems. If the paperwork's wrong, it could be never because you might not be able to remedy it. We deal with adjudications for deposit returns and we have client money protection in place. If you get it wrong, these are the things that could potentially happen. Fines now up to £30,000, instant penalty charge notices. The £30,000 is obviously going to be for the extreme cases. You're not going to not have done a gas cert and get slapped with a £30,000 fine. But this is now the type of authority that the councils have. And as Sally said earlier, they are employing people because they get to keep the money. So for the first time in a long, long time, I think enforcement is going to come. Because we have had all these legislation changes and nobody enforces it. So that's why people think, why bother? I think enforcement is now coming because they get to keep the money. They're also going to be looking to ban landlords. Interesting one. Landlords with big portfolios, you're banned from renting your property. What does that mean? What that means is you are then going to have to instruct an agent that's approved by the council to handle your affairs for whatever time, whatever length of time your ban is. Prosecution and criminal charges. Landlords, there's so many criminal um, offences out there now under the Housing Act. Be weary because you could potentially end up in jail.